Hi, it's Jamie with UK Extension and today we're at the beautiful UK Arboretum and we're talking about flowering plants, in this case deciduous magnolias. When I say magnolia, the first thing that comes to most people's minds are those beautiful evergreen southern magnolias. And those are a little borderline for us here because of our winter cold. They're not all hardy enough to always look good through our winters. The deciduous types, for the most part, do very, very well here. I want to point out to you that most magnolias are very large trees, so even these we are standing in are relatively young trees. This is an extremely large form of, I guess we could lump this with the saucer magnolias. Flowers of this size are not typical for saucer magnolia, but I suppose this is probably a hybrid with some other species. I, I expect this to be either Vulcan or Galaxy. I'm not totally sure on either of those, but those are very similar with similar size blooms. So the magnolias are very easily grown. They're fairly rapid growing. They have the fragrance on these blooms right now will just blow your mind. It's, it's wafting for miles across here and it's drawing people from all around. So in addition to these large pink blooms, I need to mention to you there are smaller varieties as well and we're gonna talk about some of those one by one. Something like this everyone does not have space for in their landscape. So strong, uh, strong selling points of magnolia are the rapid growth. They're beautiful flowers, but these flowers do not last very long. You're generally going to get about 10 days to two weeks of flower out of these magnolias. And there are some, I'm going to step over here and show you a smaller version of this, and it's not really the same plant, but some people refer to these smaller plants as lily flowered magnolias, another set of hybrids, and these are typically named little girls names. Some people call them the little girls series. The most common ones are Anne and Jane, but there's Ricky, Betty, Susan, a bunch of them in the market. They tend to bloom, this is an earlier one, there are many that tend to bloom a little later than the saucers and tend to avoid some of the frost damage. The earliest flowering magnolias are prone to being nipped by a late spring frost and we get a lot of that this time of year. I just want to point out because many times these are sold for foundation plantings in small yards and they are small as far as trees go, but in the grand scheme of land or in the grand scheme of landscapes, that's a pretty good sized plant and it's going to get bigger than this. Even these small ones are going to go to about 15 feet. I don't know if we can pick it up, but flowering behind this is a larger white magnolia. I suspect that one is Leonard Messel, which is a, another hybrid. And we're going to take you to show you some of the smaller versions, actually younger plants of this this and another white magnolia called star magnolia that is about this same size but blooms even earlier. But magnolias can be a great choice here. Their primary disease problems are going to be powdery mildew and some scales. There are some pretty serious scale problems that can attack magnolias. Those things are more of an issue if they're under stress. So rich fertile soils are where they're going to be happiest, even moisture. They don't tolerate drought terribly well but they can take it when they're established and generally if you keep the plant happy you're going to have fewer of those problems. So we're going to go look at some other versions of magnolia that you might want to consider if these are a little bigger than what you have in mind. And here we're standing with a, another one of the smaller lily flowered magnolias. I just wanted to point this one out to you to show you how there is this span of bloom times. This is a later flowering one that's not even open yet, just beginning to come into bloom. And another of the smaller of the magnolias are going to be the star magnolias. This is Magnolia stellata. Tiny little bit of pink here. Now keep in mind this whole plant is about roughly half of the mature height. So it's going to get much, much larger. You can sometimes find these trained to a single stem where they make small trees and that might get things up off the lawn a little bit. But not tiny plants, but very worthwhile plants if you're after that early spring color. And aside from a few pest problems, magnolias are generally pretty low maintenance and easy to care for. Just think of these for your garden, but just keep in mind the flowers are fleeting and you just kind of have not nondescript foliage the rest of the year, but with any landscape plant that's going to kind of be the case and you just need other things to carry your seasonal interest throughout the rest of the year.